In November 1922, the reign of one of the most powerful empires of all time came to an end. The Ottoman Empire, which had ruled the eastern Mediterranean region and far beyond for over six centuries, was history. But the end did not come very suddenly, for a long time there had already been signs of a gradual decline of the empire, which was finally referred to by the other great powers only as the sick man on the Bosporus. Long gone were the days when the Ottoman Empire was one of the world's greatest military and economic powers. When the empire stretched from the Danube to the Nile. And when it was considered the center of culture and science. But how could such a rapid rise be followed by such a continuous decline? Why were the rulers unable to turn the tide and why did the empire eventually collapse completely? We look at all these questions in today's video. Have fun! The name of the empire goes back to the leader of the Turkish tribes in Anatolia, Osmanai. He united all the local tribes and under him and his successors, the empire was able to expand steadily. One of the most glorious victories was the conquest of Constantinople, which was the capital of the Byzantine Empire for over 1,000 years. The city was renamed Istanbul and became the new capital of the Ottoman Empire. It ultimately served as the starting point for further conquests. And the Ottomans were incredibly successful. More and more countries in the Middle East, Africa and the Balkans were conquered. The reign of Suleiman I who ruled from 1520 to 1566 is regarded as the Golden Age. Not only did the empire achieve its greatest territorial expansion under him when it actually stretched as far as just outside Vienna. He also promoted art and science, created a uniform legal system and the empire was characterized by stability and wealth. However, it was precisely in Vienna that the Ottoman Empire saw the limits of its ability to expand. The siege of the city failed and a second siege in the 17th century, in which over 200,000 Ottoman soldiers were sent into the field, also failed miserably. And this second siege of Vienna is often described by historians as the turning point of the Ottoman Empire. It became clear that the Ottoman Empire had overextended itself and was quietly being left behind by the European powers. This was particularly due to the colonization of the Americas. Since the discovery of the New World, the world's main trade routes had shifted from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic, which meant that the Ottomans' economic importance continued to decline. And the military, which had been so efficient in the centuries before, was only a shadow of its former self compared to the European armies. The reasons for this were corruption, a lack of innovation and increasing bureaucracy. And so more and more military defeats followed and it became increasingly difficult to adequately defend the far-flung provinces. Of course, it has to be said that the empire still existed for a few centuries, but it was unable to return to its former heyday. It finally received its economic death blow during the onset of industrialization. Due to the aforementioned reasons of corruption and lack of innovation, which ran through the entire empire, industrialization was also missed and the gap to the European powers grew even larger. This was followed by economic crises, which led to uprisings and independence movements. The Greeks were able to achieve their independence as early as 1830. In 1878, the independence of Romania, Serbia and Bulgaria was proclaimed at the Congress of Berlin. And in the Balkan Wars at the beginning of the 20th century, it finally lost almost all of its possessions in Europe. And so we find ourselves in the First World War, which was to deal the final blow to the Ottoman Empire. It allied itself with the central powers of Germany and Austria-Hungary. And as we know, it backed the wrong horse. The result was almost half a million dead soldiers plus almost four million wounded. The empire was bled dry and then divided up between the victorious powers. The dictated peace of Sivras was particularly bitter for the Turkish nationalists as it even divided the Turkish heartland into many occupation zones. Similar to Germany after the Second World War. However, after the peace treaty, another war broke out, which was to turn the tide for the Turks once again. The Greeks, who had already received a large part of ancient Asia Minor in the peace treaty, now saw their chance to penetrate even deeper into the Turkish heartland. They encountered little resistance and were only stopped by Mustafa Kemal Ataturk around 50 kilometers from Ankara. And he launched a counterattack and was able to recapture large parts of what is now Turkey. In this way, he managed to turn a country on the brink of total defeat back into an aspiring nation. The Treaty of Lausanne in 1923 finally established Turkey's new borders, in which it was once again able to achieve major territorial gains. Shortly before this, Mehmed VI, the last Ottoman Sultan, had secretly left the palace in Istanbul and gone into exile in Italy. The Ottoman Empire was thus finally declared over and the foundation stone was laid for the establishment of the Turkish Republic.